The uh, member for Battle River Crowfoot. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and uh, and it's uh, a good couple of questions, and I certainly appreciate serving on the Public Safety Committee with that member. Um, you know, I think that that uh, that he brings up a good point, and that's the fact that that uh, that I, I I I've been astounded since being elected. The it seems like the lack of 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 management of whether it's the legislative timetable, just simply the reactive nature that this government takes to everything that they do. They seem to be more worried about uh, the the present uh, uh, polling than than they do about ensuring that Canadians have good governance, um, and it, and that's troubling because that does not result in the best interests for Canadians and 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 Canadian in this case Canadian workers being respected and 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 with respect to to uh, to some of the regulations. Uh, th over the last five, uh, five or six months, um, there, there's been, been thousands of oil and gas workers in Atlantic Canada that have been going to work and, and with the uncertainty surrounding the regulations that are required in order for them to be protected on their workplaces. And that's troubling. And it speaks to some of the challenges. And, and although I've never worked in, in the oil and gas sector off of, uh, um, on, on the offshore sense, I spent close to 10 years. That's how I paid for my college and, and, and university. I spent close to 10 years driving a pressure truck in East Central Alberta's oil patch. And the reality of, of, of sour oil and gas and the specifics around that and having to deal with with changes in regulations because of tragedy and whatnot and and there's no question that it is a, it is a dangerous both in terms of the immediate um, dangerous activities that one has to do on a daily basis but also the longer term effects that we're um, uh, learning more about when it comes to chemical and whatnot and 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 that personally I I, I had a workplace, um, uh, a, a thankfully a small workplace accident that uh, that resulted in some changes to the company that I worked for in terms of practice to ensure that that sort of thing didn't happen again. So 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 I thank the member for his questions and the advocacy and and the opportunity to highlight some of the challenges that that, that are faced because of the present circumstances that we find ourselves in. Thank you. Questions and comments. Questions and comments. Uh, just one second. Oh, member for uh, Cypress Hills Grasslands. Yeah, I just want to thank my colleague for the speech and thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I put my hand up last minute there. I figured I'd get one more question here from my colleague to just kind of elaborate a little bit further about just, just how vital, you know, health and safety regulations are and just how serious that the industry at large takes it. Obviously, he has experience working, you know, in the, in the prairie regions here in the oil and gas sector, not so much on the offshore. But if he just wants to elaborate just a little bit further on that, because I think it's extremely important to show this how serious it is and just why it's it's appalling that the government would take so long to actually move in on something like this and wait until the last possible minute. And even after the deal had expired, as the previous member who asked the question alluded to on this topic. The Honourable Member for Battle River Crowfoot. Thank you very much. Uh, um Madam Speaker, and I appreciate the question from my friend and colleague uh, just across the border. And certainly, uh, we've 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 lived through some of the realities of of the economic uh, uh, benefits and impacts of, of of the current government's management of the energy sector, specifically in the cancellation of the K the KXL pipeline, which exclusively went through Cypress Hills grasslands, that constituency, and Battle River Crowfoot um, uh, to. To where it was to cross the border into the United States, and and I think uh, he he makes a, a really good point. The energy industry takes these things very seriously, and government needs to ensure that there is strong regulations that workers are protected. Um, and 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 I have I've seen firsthand whether it be the ten years that I specifically worked in in the energy industry, seeing some of the the more lax regulations in the beginning, and then in some cases because of tragedy. In fact, there was I believe a, a oil and gas worker from his constituency that had passed passed away tragically because of exposure to 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 sour gas that led to some pretty radical changes to the point of needing to carry around scbas and 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 additional testing equipment to ensure that 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 other workers in similar situations would not be exposed to the same threat that led to a, a tragedy before and and i can go back further to my late grandfather who who helped build one of the first um in in the region that i i I now have the honor of 
of representing helped build one of the first gas um, gas facilities that uh, at at Gooseberry Lake. My my late grandfather Felix Couric uh, was he he helped physically build it, and then 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 was was hired to 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 help run it and spend mo his his entire working career in the energy sector uh, and 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 hearing some of the stories from the early days where where if a float on a tailings pond was stuck they they'd simply dive in the tailings and and go go uh, go float it now that was back in the you know 60s or so <laughs> so things have obviously changed madam speaker to the point where now world class environmental regulations world class uh, safety regulations that have have shown what can be accomplished when industry and government and workers when there's that re mutual respect and they work together to accomplish something. And I would simply conclude with this, Madam Speaker. I think that speaks to why the energy industry is so important in, in this country. We lead the world. We can be, you know, people care about where, where their food comes from, whether it's organic or not, or, or they care about their coffee if it's fair trade. They care about diamonds in their, their wedding bands. You know what, Madam Speaker, we need to be the supplier of choice. We can be the supplier of choice when it comes to energy and to ensure that there is, 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 is a strong mutual respect for workers, for industry, and the governments involved to encourage that development. Madam Speaker, those, that, that can be done. We've seen it done in the past in this country. And I, I, I lament the fact that we're even having some of these conversations today that would question that that can, in fact, be our future.